Good morning. So, a lot of you know that I'm no spring chicken anymore, and I have to wear readers, so it's part of my daily routine now. Uh, and I have them all over the house because I need them everywhere I go. Thanks for joining me. I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the great pictures I have. I feel really lucky that uh, for having such a tumultuous childhood that I ended up with so many photos. And people are like, how? If you moved around so much and you had to downsize because your mom was moving into a bus, how'd you end up with all these photos? That's an, that's an excellent question. So um, as my dad got older, uh, he started showing signs of dementia and Alzheimer's. So got to a point where I had to move him from Boston to Spokane, which was sad, but also great because I finally got a chance to know my dad a lot better. And he hung on to a lot of the school pictures we sent him, letters we wrote him, some of them instigated by mom. Tell your dad he's late with the child support again. But all that stuff got saved by my dad. So in that transition, when he moved from the East Coast to the West Coast, um, I, I got hold of all those pictures that we had sent him over the years. And he was a photographer to begin with. So he took a lot of pictures of us, especially when he visited. So that was great. We also happened to live next door to three students who were studying photography at San Francisco State University, I believe. And they were Keith, Carey, and Evan. And I think Evan ended up going to UC Davis because some of his photos showed up in publications um, for that school. So anyway, uh, let's start kind of at the beginning. As you know, I wrote about my handsome, you know, father and my pretty mom in book one. And they really were a handsome couple to say the least uh, this gave me some anxiety because I was like how come my parents are so good looking and I'm just okay you know I kind of thought I got fell into the shallow end of the gene pool but actually I'm fine with my looks now especially since you get older and you start to care less so this is a rare photo uh, when we lived at 1603 L Street in Davis California and every year we were allowed to make our own Halloween costumes. And I thought Chris's was really creative. She just, she wanted to be a mom since she was a little girl. And in this picture, she's a pregnant woman. Um, I don't know why I chose to be a cheerleader, uh, but I was a pretty cute girl. And, um, you know, for a nine or 10 year old, that was a pretty weird choice for me. I think my brother, Alex, as the pirate here, looks great. Molly's chose to be a fortune teller. And um, it kind of fit her because she was always casting spells. She was sort of dangerously cute. And I remember my little, my friend Gordon Wadehofer, his little brother, Larry Wadehofer, ran into a tether pole at Valley Oak Elementary School chasing Molly because he thought she was so cute. When he regained consciousness, he told me, her hair is the color of straw. I was like, well, that's a weird thing to say. Shelly here is uh, dressed as a bum. This is a photo from Placerville, California. We lived on the Diamond D Ranch. It was actually in Shingle Springs. My mom made those ponchos that my sisters are wearing. And uh, this was quite a change because we lived on Castro Street in San Francisco. And then all of a sudden we ended up moving to the country. To me, it was like an episode of Green Acres. And it was like somebody flipped the channel during a commercial because it was from you know, right in the heart of San Francisco, Castro Street, bustling business. And then we had 113 acres out here in the country and um, there was a lot to explore. And I really liked living here, except that mom started having an affair with a ranch hand. And um, at that point I thought it was time to leave. This photo, unfortunately, is a little damaged, but um, that's just me going down a slide somewhere in San Francisco. Again, one of the photography students took this photo. This is a rare one too, because this is 1603 L Street, Davis, California. What I remember about this photo is uh, we were wearing recycled sandals. They were made from old tires. I think they were coming up from Mexico back then, but my mom was starting to let more of her hippiness out. And she bought Birkenstocks around this time, which I thought were the ugliest shoes in America. 
but now I'm a huge fan and um, I even got my son to buy a pair or I bought a pair for my son because I think uh, they're awesome shoes. But of course, back then they weren't as popular. I think my mom ordered hers out of the Whole Earth catalog. Hippies were hip to them, but there weren't, there weren't a lot of them in Davis. Anyway, that's Molly and me. We had regular chores to do. This is still when we were living with John and we had to make sure we did our homework and get good grades and there were still some boundaries. This was right before things got crazy. I believe John took this photo of my mom too. This is around that same era in the uh, early 70s. Uh, and that's a pretty nice picture. My mom uh, was a very beautiful woman and um, was her whole life. So this one was taken during one of dad's visits when we lived in Placerville or on, in Shingle Springs. And I think this is somewhere up near Placerville, but we had to pose for so many photos and we hated it. We we're like, gosh, dad, enough with the pictures, the pictures, the pictures, the pictures. But of course now I feel totally different. Like, oh, I'm so glad we have these pictures. But this is a good example um, of like, you know, posing us and at the time we hated it, but now I'm so grateful we have these pictures. They're just awesome. Now, one more thing or a couple more things I wanted to show you. So I talked about the three photography students who live next door to us in Castro Street. I think this was a college assignment uh, for one of their courses. So it's a photo album and the way this unfolds, I think is really creative. So this is, we were allowed to run wild in their apartment. They lived right next door to us. So there is a mattress you can flying towards the camera, and this is a great way to start the album. Molly's behind me, um, and I don't know who that woman is, probably one of their girlfriends. So that's my sister, Chris. And I don't even know if kids do that anymore, um, but that's a nice photo of us on the stump. I have an iron-on patch from that I got out of a box of Captain Crunch cereal, and I can remember how abrasive that cereal was. Like what I like about this is not just the horizontal format, but this is a teeny tiny backyard. But to a kid, it felt huge. We had we made like uh, dug holes and covered them up with newspaper and sticks to try to make traps. And to us, it was you know big because we were so little. So for being such a small yard, um, there's Chris in action jumping rope. It just feels like um, in a way that was our universe. You know, playing in the backyard. And then this is a nice sequence. So um, you probably can tell by the way I'm built that I'm a former gymnast. Anyway, uh, I took gymnastic lessons at a recreation park near our house in Castro Street and learned to do some things like walk on my hands and headstands and stuff like that. This is my little brother, Alex, trying to keep up with uh, his dad and my stepdad uh, doing a headstand. There's a little poopy poopy stain on his diaper right there that's quite special. And then, um, oops, I skipped a page. So this is a cute picture of Evan and he's hanging Molly up in their apartment, uh, just goofing around. I think we made really good subjects because most of the time we didn't know our picture was being taken at all. And uh, that's quite the contrast from my dad who tended to just line us up and want more organized formal type photos. I think this is a really, really outstanding photo of Molly. Um, it happens to coincide with the Summer of Love. It was shot on a rooftop behind our apartments on Castro Street. She's got flowers in her hair and the expression on her face is just priceless. And um, it's just, it's an outstanding photo. Whenever I post this one, it gets a lot of likes. Shelly, the oldest uh, of all the kids, has always been the artist in the family, and she had she showed talent at a really early age. And her art influenced our art a lot because she was older and she was more coordinated and she had talent, so we could to kind of get a shortcut to art lessons by watching what she was doing and drawing what she was drawing. And later in life, she would get this set of rapidiograph pens. I don't even, they're probably still around, Conahor or something. And they're fine point pens that use Indian ink. And you can get them like up to half a hair uh, in diameter, just super sharp. You can draw, you know, pinpoint precision with it. Well, she used them to draw tattoos on us, which would last about a week if you kept them dry. 
and it didn't hurt as much as a real tattoo, uh, I'm sure, because I didn't have one as a kid, but uh, we wore them with pride because her art was just so outstanding. And then we get to, is that it? No, another page here. Oh, here's a great sequence. This is me playing hide and go seek. I think that's Irene. So we had a Filipino family that lived near us too in the same area. It was Irene, Lillian, and Yori. And Yori and Lillian and Irene would babysit us sometimes. And we developed this song we would sing when we wanted Irene to come out and play with us in the yard. We, I won't do it for you now, but we would chant her name until one of the girls came out and played with us. But I really just like that they, you know, planted themselves in one place and caught this sequence unfolding before them. Feel really lucky to have that as a memory. And then I thought this was a really good way to close the album. So at the beginning, I'm leaping towards the camera and here, it looks like Molly, Chris, and I are on swings and it's coming towards the camera and then it's going away from the camera. So that's pretty cool. Here's a color photo I wanted to share, a couple of color photos. Um, this one, hopefully the reflection's not too bad. Can you see that? So that's Molly getting tangled up in someone else's kite string at Chrissy Field in San Francisco. Um, Dad gave Molly two nicknames. This one was dangerous because she was dangerous to be around because she could find trouble. This person that you know she, she was tangled up with, they didn't mind at all. They were like, oh, it's so cute. And of course, Dad took about 1,600 pictures of this. And uh, this is one that he framed and made its way all the way from Boston back to Spokane. And then I have a couple big pictures from school that must have got sent to my dad over the years too. Really nice picture of Christina. Um, just so beautiful. I always loved her wavy, gravy hair. She was into headbands. She had her own sense of style. Our god sister, Claire, would wear her socks the same way Chris would. And uh, she was just a really good older sister. She, uh, you know, took the time to, you know, be patient with us. And uh, I miss her so much. Shelly, this is probably about sixth grade, so I'm guessing we lived in uh, Fair Oaks when this picture was taken. And um, you can see kind of this bump around her ear. She had an ear that stuck out just a little bit. And of course, we would tease her and, and you know, say, Shelly, will you pass the butter, like Spock, you know, and uh, just kind of make fun of it. But, you know, like kids do. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is, this is a picture Dave Horton took of, Todd Bargman, Brad Bargman, and me up at Evergreen Lodge. And this is the setting for the next book I'm working on. This will be my fourth book. There's a lot less mama drama in this book. It's a lot more just about those uh, formative teen years where you're an idiot and you don't know anything about girls, but you're trying to figure it all out. Um, I was really blessed to be able to work up at Evergreen Lodge uh, in my teens and in my early 20s when I was going to college. Um, in a lot of ways, these summers were, uh, man, how do I put it? I had like a surrogate family just working together with Brad's family and his cousins, the Kerners. They're all just great, colorful characters, and I'm revisiting them as I write the book, and I don't have a working title for it yet. It hasn't really fallen into place but I've been jamming. Um, I started the book in September and I already have more than 100 pages. Now only two of them are good, but no, I, I have a lot of good material down. It just, you know, for me, writing is about rewriting. I get it down and then I got to rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it until it, it starts to flow. So uh, thanks for tuning in to this live video and uh, keeping up with Don't Call Me Jupiter and whatever that next book is going to be called. Get out there. Have a great day. Thanks so much for supporting my books. Bye.